let's explore. Hi, my name is Karen and this is Sapphire Blue Travel Explores and it's part of the Sapphire Blue Travel family. Where we talk about all things travel, whether it be vlogs that I do with my husband Phil as we share our adventures and show off at the moment this amazing country of Australia or other places that we travel around the world. If you're new here we say hi and if you're coming back for a regular visit we say welcome back. Sit down, pull up a seat. Let's look at the Eden Killer Whale Trail. In Eden they have a huge whaling history and today we're going to be looking at a couple of locations that help highlight that for different reasons. The first location that we're going to start off at is at Eden Wharf. Eden Wharf is a beautiful location. You can pick up some fish and chips. There's some work going on. Over the last couple of years, cruise ships have started stopping by in non-COVID times, of course, stopping by Eden for a visit. And so Eden are developing part of their wharf area for that. I want to talk to you about these little billboard things that they have dotted around the whale trail where you can use a little key a QR code on your phone and get more information about whaling and what that particular destination means for um, the whaling start at the wharf pick up some fish and chips feed the seagulls and just enjoy this beautiful surroundings from there we're going to head into town and we're going to go to the killer whale museum in this museum they have a skeleton of a killer whale they named old tom who was instrumental and apparently the the leader of the pack of the killer whales that helped the whalers find the whales that they were bringing in and processing them. Later on we'll get to a place that we do it. In the museum you can also learn about the process of whaling, what they extracted from the whales, what they used it for, how they did it, so that throughout the rest of the tour some things are a little bit more brought to life I guess is an easy way to say it. From the Killer Whale Museum, we're going to head a little bit out of town to the Rotary Park Lookout. Today there are some great um, seats and viewing areas for whale watching. And back in the day when whaling was still activity that was undertaken, whalers would actually use that as one of their spotting areas for knowing when the hunt was on. The migration is between August and November every year, so obviously that was when the whaling industry was most active. The next place we're going to go to is a place called the Seahorse Inn at um, Boyd Town. Now, Ben Boyd was an immigrant who came over, had lot of fingers in quite a few pies and had quite a bit of money, and he was instrumental in part, and he played a part in the early whaling industry, and he built this, this little settlement around his particular um, endeavours as on a plot of land that he owned. And now the only thing that's really left from that, those days is the Seahorse Inn. And you can wander the sand on the Bimunda, Bri um, Bimunda Beach. I hope I'm saying that right. From the Seahorse Inn, we're going to head into just, just not quite, in Ben Boyd National Park, we're going to head to the Davidson Whaling Station. Now, the Davidsons were latecomers to the whaling industry, and they were the ones that actually probably finished the whaling industry by some of the resources that I've looked at. They had a little homestead. They operated what they called a shore-based operation, and at Kaya Beach, where the homestead is, there is obviously the homestead with some gardens. It was still lived in until I think it was the mid-60s, I think it was, um, by a Davidson relative. Um, and then you walk down onto Kaya Beach. And on the side of the beach, there is a triworks, which is uh, the area where they would bring the whale carcasses in and extract the oil from the blubber and um, process all of that in this little um, inlet that's quite beautiful now to visit. And there were three generations of Davidsons that whaled from Kaya um, Beach. And the last place that we want to look at is, ben, is Boyd Tower in Ben Boyd National Park. Now you do need to pay the fees to get into um, Ben Boyd National Park. It's $8 per day per car. If you want to see what else you can do in Ben Boyd National Park apart from visit Boyd Tower, check out this video above. 
where we visited not only a couple of the locations that we're talking about in this video, but a few other choice destinations within the park for our $8 a day. Boyd Tower. Boyd built this tower on a good vantage point. One of the things that he'd hoped was that this tower would eventually become a lighthouse, but when the powers that be came to survey the land, they decided that a cape further down within what is now Ben Boyd National Park was the chosen location. So Boyd ended up with a very beautiful spotting tower for his for whaling and gave him a little bit of an added advantage to some of the other guys because he did have this other vantage point. It's a great tower. It's worth exploring. You can go inside and look up at it. Um, it's been hit by lightning, so there's a few rocks scattered around where it has lost a corner of the turret. But it's just an amazing thing to see. It shows it takes about an hour to drive to all of these destinations. So they say you can do it in a day. Um, but you might want to take a picnic out to Ben Boyd National Park and make a fuller day of it. Or even just, as I said, enjoy fish and chips at the wharf, up at the lookout. There's lots of places that you can just take it a bit slower or you can do it in about four hours maybe five i hope you found this helpful check out the playlist right now we not only went to eden but we did a few other places in a van life adventure thanks for joining us today i hope you did find this useful if you did let us know and if you forget hit that like and subscribe button ring that little bell as always thanks for joining us travel brilliantly bye